Good morning, traders. I'm Dennis Dick. And I'm Joel Elkanen. Welcome to Pre-Market Info. Market down just a tick here, Joel. Uh, we got the Pfizer disappointing earnings, but we've got other stocks that are trading higher. Uh, what do you think this overall market, first of all? Well, first of all, we missed uh, the recent high of the move by three ticks yesterday, making a 15.92 and a quarter high, uh, the high that we had back on uh, April 11th with 15.93. So there's your bogey on the upside if you're trying to sell the top. Uh, after that, who knows, we may be seeing the $1,600 level. Uh, coming back on the downside, you got you have to use the overnight low. We're two and a half points above uh, 1585 and a quarter. That's uh, that's our minor support for this morning. Yeah, and the rotation continues here still, Joel. Like we were saying, the loser started picking up steam here three or four days ago. Has continued. Apple, which everybody had for dead when it broke 400, has been straight up for three or four sessions. We liked the momentum. We thought it might continue up to that 430 area. It blew through the 430 area yesterday, actually. Closed, though, right there at 430.12. Is trading up a little bit here in the pre-market. It's up a couple of bucks. Uh, continue momentum for Apple. Yeah, kind of a kind of a quiet rally yesterday. I uh, really trading. We had one spotty trade at four thirty two sixty six, but right now just kind of making new highs as we speak in the pre market. Uh, Monday's high four thirty three sixty two. Um, above that, uh, you might be looking at the four thirty seven ninety nine level. Uh, that was the high that we had on April 11th. So uh, Apple on the rebound here, uh, perhaps heading for that 440 level. You want to talk about stocks on the rebound, bring up a chart of IBM because this stock really had a rebound there yesterday. Again, the same story. Stocks that were dead basically three or four days ago, the money started rotating in and people were looking for a home. They were selling out of those consumer staples. They were selling out of those stocks, looking to go into some of the laggers, and this is what's happened. They looked at IBM being down 12, 15, actually over 20 points, 25 points from the highs, and they started picking it up, and the stock had a huge bounce again yesterday. It's starting to actually fill that gap from the earnings. Yeah, it does. A quiet uh, quiet 13-point rally um, after 187.68. Never even really gave you a shot at that. Didn't give you a double bottom or anything like that to look at, but uh, just quietly marched up, you know, psychological $200 level, uh, not going to be much resistance, I don't think. 199.68. I don't think it's going to go back immediately up to this 206 level. Uh, but uh, if you happen to catch this, uh, you know, on the dip, you know, move your stops up. Maybe the yesterday's low, 194.65, and lock in some profits. But uh, nice rally in IBM. Let's get to some of the earnings stocks. Start with the big gun, Pfizer. Reported earnings of 54 cents versus estimates of 56 cents. Um, obviously a miss. They lowered guidance slightly too for next quarter, so that's got the stock under significant pressure. So here's the stock obviously had got beat up there on that European uh, news there two sessions ago. Bounced back nicely, uh, but here the earnings is going to bring it right back down. I'd probably keep an eye on that low of 28.79, which we made on the 26th. That might get tested here today. We're down over a buck in the pre-market. Yeah, exactly. You nailed this one. Uh, you did the immediate dip. Took you under the twenty-nine dollar level. It only took you to twenty-eight ninety-four. You can see the rebound is taking you back over the twenty-nine sixty dollar level. So that's going to be um, some minor resistance. Uh, got a nice reference point here with that low that you had on Friday, twenty-eight seventy-nine, fifteen cents or so away from the pre-market low. Going to find some support there. Uh, also had a low at 28.64, but uh, you know, with the actual earnings out, I just don't expect you know this you know the snapback rally like the other day when it had the sell-off. It was over some news about some letter or something that yeah. was issued to them. This is solid fundamental news yeah. on earnings, lowering Lower guidance. guidance. Yeah. yeah, I just I don't see the so. Well, let kudos to um, all those people that sold a gazillion at 31. Yeah, I remember, remember we were talking about yeah, that. Yeah, some institution like, oh, just kept dumping at 31, and they took them out, and they dumping more and more, and then 31.10, there's all kinds of institutional selling pressure up there, so somebody had the right call on that one. But looking at that big sell-off, I think I agree with you, Joel. I don't think it's going to bounce back like it did last time. It's like, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. People once bitten, twice shy in this, so if they you know did buy here and now it's... And 
and, or buy that low and it bounced up. Now they're you know underwater here again. So I think you're going to see some sustained selling pressure in this. I think if this thing sniffs anywhere up near the thirty dollar area, I think there'll be sellers oh, no. all over the place. Yeah, no, I don't see that. It may never trade thirty. <laughs> it may never trade thirty again. <laughs> well, it took ten years to get back here or whatever. From when, yeah. <laughs> when it's trading forty-five dollars back in two thousand, so. <laughs> Yeah, the people that bought there had a long time coming to get back to these levels. Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, BWLD, reported earnings here as well. $0.87 cents versus $0.99. Cents. Uh, stock actually trading down here, $2.13 on that earnings report. Bounced around quite a bit after hours on the report. I don't know why it was trading higher, but... Um, you know, had the initial sell-off, obviously, with the earnings, and then it looks like it spiked higher, trading up for, you know, a good hour, two hours after hours last night, but is now trading down, and I think it's a lot to do with a lot of analysts here ganging up on its Stern AG, downgrading the stock, Key Bank downgrading the stock, so, um... Obviously, the analysts aren't in love with the earnings report, and it looks like Wall Street isn't either. Uh, you gotta have to block out this 89.79 low, and then also the 99.80 high. Because ten point you know, after really, hours range, wow. Ten point after hours range, but look at this, Dennis. I mean, you know, after all that crazy wild activity, now you're now you're consolidating here, basically, uh, since the market opens at 4 a.m., uh, 91 has been the low uh, during that time period, and uh, 93 has been the high. So you get looking for some consolidation, playing that range, hanging out at 92. Uh, I think using those pre-market parameters, you break above 93, you have a chance for a rally. Below 91, obviously you have the low at 89.79. Let's look at that in a more dignified way and look at the daily chart wow. look at this uh, yeah that's a lot of, of wings man i'll tell you it's a lot of Ooh. lot of chicken wings a lot of chicken wings and just for you trend lovers here you trend line lovers you know we could get one you know going up through here and that would bring you back down to the 90 dollar level also got to be aware of the triple bottom you had at 89.93 89.86 90 dollars so I'd say 90 major support here um, in the BW3. 3D Systems, which is triple D, 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 D. Those are my initials as well. So I always like. I always thought if I ever went and or started a hedge fund or something, or you want to go public, I'd like that ticker symbol D, D, D. That's because of my initials. But 3D Systems, triple D, 21 cents versus 21 cents. Uh, stock's up a buck and a half here. So they came in line with the earnings, but uh, stock is getting a decent lift here. Uh, 30, 70... 25 trading right now after closing at 35.77. Yeah, 37.34 um, hit it initially, and now you're coming up. You're making new highs as we speak here. 37.46. Uh, let's take a look. This at looks like a daily. breakout to me. Yeah, it does. It does. And now it, you're heading towards the uh, critical uh, critical price of 37.85. That was a high on March 4th. A uh, little bit of a. Uh, little bit of room over the $38 level of 38.29. So 38 is a good level to look at above 38.29 here and you have more of a vacuum up to the $40 level. But uh, boy, you've had a rally here from under the $30 level, 27.88, 10 point rally here. I don't know, I'm just throwing 38 out there as uh, potential resistance. I think this thing could start marching though, so just be careful if you are picking the 38 spot. Don't let it start to get away from you. If you go above that high at 38.29, which was on February 22nd, I think it's pretty open until you get to that 40 area. So just be careful. There is some air here above 38 bucks. So 38, I agree with the initial resistance. Takes that out, just be careful. Uh, Domino's Pizza, DP Zebra. Reported earnings, good earnings again. Man, this company always beats. This stock just quietly <laughs> marches higher every single quarter. They beat again, 59 cents versus 55. The stock is trading up another buck and a half, 54.65 after closing at 52.95. So Domino's Pizza, everything's going right there. Wow, why didn't I go into the pizza business? Look at this. Uh, Unbelievable. Just 54.69. That's the recent high we hit in the pre-market. I didn't even have to look at the daily. I know it's a new all-time high, uh, surpassing the 53.50 high uh, that we had from yesterday. 
that will be minor support if we do go in a pullback mode. Go to the uh, weekly on this at, too, Joel. Yeah, you got to see this. Look at this Look at trend that, here. I, I was just looking at that. That, that is, is absolutely incredible. Climbing Mount Look Everest there. Eventually Mount Everest. We don't know how high Mount Everest is. That's the only problem. Eventually, what is just, that is incredible. When you look from 2009 from the financial crisis. So what does, what's the low of that price? That thing got down a lot. Uh, I'm trying to grab well, it right I now. Two dollars and sixty-one cents on November thirtieth, two thousand eight. So if you were picking this up in the financial crisis at two dollars and sixty-one cents, you have now what is twenty times your money on that. That is an incredible, incredible move. Um, you know, well, there was a split in there too. There was a split. I think they did some funky split somewhere. I can't remember when it was. I think it was around thirty-eight or forty. Because I have um, in December of two thousand eight, I have a low. It's it's six cents, and then in uh, November I have a low at negative thirty-nine. Oh, that's something's wrong. So <laughs> My chart doesn't show that. I don't know. Trade Station. I have to talk to them. I've got Neil. A split. Neil Vest is arguing with them, and they say two dollars and sixty-one cents is a low. So I'm pretty. I can pretty much guarantee it didn't trade negative. So <laughs> something funky going on with your Trade Station data. But two dollars and sixty-one cents is where it's trading, wow. or where it traded down to. And in, in, in any regard, it's been an incredible march for Domino's Pizza. What's Papa John's? symbol do you know mm, I ask her is that publicly now, I traded I, yeah it used to be was, I think yeah it was Papa, is it Papa? Uh, Benzinga oh. Des, uh, PZZ, all oh yeah PZZA yeah, right 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 we I should know you, that come on these, we're sleeping on the wow one. if you're in these uh, pizza stocks you've been making a lot of dough <laughs> Joel's got to throw out the pun. You knew he's good for one here this morning. Ah, we got to move on. Hot, hot is hot. I'll throw out my own pun there. You got obviously Starwoods Hotels, H O T. It's not hot, not as hot as the pizza, but it's hot still too. It's trading up a dollar fifty, sixty-four bucks after closing at sixty-two seventy or sixty-two forty-six. And we got a couple tops here, Joel. You're gonna like this yeah, daily chart. Yeah, finally a chart I can look at yeah. and give a good opinion here. 64 and a quarter was your high in the pre-market here. Looking at the dailies, those 64 is just sticking out like a sore thrum. 6406 was the double top here, uh, April 11th and 12th. 64 and a quarter, the high in the pre-market. So if, and I'm not recommending, but if you're trying to sell the all-time high, uh, you should get a shot this morning. You know what's fun? In, you know what's funny to you? Say the 6406 number. I have an institutional seller just selling 15,000 shares at 6406. It's the one level that actually sticks out in the book, too, so it's funny. They look at those old highs. He's got some institutions that do that. They look at these old highs, and these old highs, you know, have relevance just for that reason, and there's actually order flow reason there for it, too. Obviously, above 6406, it opens up, though, so you want to be careful. I don't let the 6406... Uh, probably listening to the show and putting their orders in. Maybe, maybe. On the show. <laughs> U.S. Steel, which is symbol X, always the most ridiculous symbol I find, but U.S. Steel, symbol X, stock is trading down again. I mean, perennial loser here. Loses 35 cents, uh, supposed to only lose 19 cents, so a miss, as oh, always. A huge miss. It, it, yeah, it's a huge miss, and it's always a huge miss here. I mean, what <laughs> is the shock here? Um, really it's shocking that the misses aren't priced in already on this you know and maybe some of it is but you know because it's only <laughs> down 80 cents i mean if you had a company that was actually doing well and you know missed by that much they'd probably be down even more but here's a company that just cannot get it right exact opposite of some of these other companies we were talking about it's trading at 1670 right now so it's trading down 80 cents joel are we going to be able to find support on this sucker I mean, I, I yeah, zero. Zero. Uh, <laughs> I think 16, you'll find support before that. Sixteen seventy, strike that. I'm from bidding the a tape. penny. I'm bidding a penny. Yeah, okay. sixteen seventy is low in the pre-market. Let's look at this. Um, in relation, you did have support at seventeen. Now That's history. Now the bot at seventeen oh one. That's going to be resistance. This is kind of a scary thing down here. Uh, below seventeen, down to sixteen thirty five. We haven't hit that in the pre-market. Then you have sixteen dollars, uh, fifteen ninety-six, and then the low at fifteen eighty. But you got to imagine here, you know, a quick dip like this. Some shorts probably took a little bit of pain in this one, and they'll be using that sixteen thirty-five area um, as a, you know, perhaps a point to uh, lighten up a little bit. Best Buy getting a pop here in the pre-market. Deutsche Bank upgrading the stock. It's trading up a dollar. The 30 right now, 25.50 after closing at 24.20.
Here's a stock, you know, Hewlett Packard, we were saying it sometimes trades with it, but Hewlett Packard's been weak. Best Buy will not budge, keeps continuing trying to march higher. I think it could test those highs today. 26.29 has been the high of the move. That was set back on the 8th. Going to be an interesting uh, session here for Best Buy. 130,000 shares, too. It's a pretty big volume. 25.55, uh, trading right at the high of the pre-market, so keep an eye on that level. Wow, he would have had a chance to buy going through 24.40, but... You would have had to have been staying up late at night to get that. Uh, resistance 2576 was a high on April 10th. We can use that as minor resistance. Also 2609 and then the high of the move at 2629. Uh, I'm going to have to hop off here, Joel, so okay. we're going to end the regular session here. Uh, before our live listeners, Joel is going to continue to take your questions, and he'll give you some answers right now. And uh, for our recorded listeners, we will be back with you guys tomorrow.